Hey guys, it's Sunday. I'm doing a musical intro. This is a beautiful gift, especially for somebody who doesn't know how to play music. It allows you to go ahead and tap out something. Why is that important? I got some bad news. Yeah. So, all music aside, I got a sad ending to a chapter. Now, some of you have been following along. And uh, Darby's writing a book. How y'all do? Y'all part of it. Y'all being that world outside of this side of the cyber little window we get to view each other through. I've been talking to a lot of people. And it seems like for the most part, there we go, how's that? A little less spotlight on me. Those lighting guys, man, they just get way out of hand sometimes. All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We should check the volume because I tend to push this. Oh, but we're looking good. Okay. What's up? What happened? Well, you know, I was writing this chapter in my fantasy book about Wibblery and Wub, this world union of beings, and how we're going to have to form this world union of beings to try to go ahead and figure out a way to have a peaceful world without all the leaders in the middle of it messing things up, you know. Some of them have ulterior motives, it seems. See, in this book, I had this uh, general mileage and General Mileage, he was supposed to go ahead and help support this president that was going to go ahead and save the country from all sorts of really, oh, you know, commie sort of things that, that in an imaginary story were, were the kind of represented that not good for the future generations party. And then the idea that there would be uh, um, in the story as the chapter develops and... Um, well, you have this this president that everybody kind of wants to support. That wants to go ahead and have peace, not new wars. And that wants to go ahead and perhaps um, dismantle some of the system that was created to keep some of the people who are in power in power for 40, 50 years. Who knows? Until they just flat die, if that's possible. In some cases, you replace hearts, you replace livers, replace kidneys. You put holographic images up that can be digitally enhanced in such ways that you could actually change their lips. So that even though you look at me and you see me talking like this, it could be a computer doing this. And I don't have any control. It's just a... <clears throat> look at what they do to me. Luckily, I have control. This is actually because I want it to look this way. See? <laughs> Here's the point. How are you going to know the difference? CGI has gotten so good that when I actually, you know, hear tell that the book is finished, you open up the book and there's a hologram, like a stage play. Imagine that. Once upon a time, that might have been hard to imagine. But now, mm -mm. So, what am I talking about today? The sad part of this chapter is I had great hopes to be able to finish the chapter up and say, yeah, and then the military came through and they went ahead and nullified the election because it was totally fraudulent. And they put away all these terrible people that were willing to lie, cheat, and steal because they controlled the system. And because they controlled the system, they were able to go ahead and determine what the output of the system was regardless of the input. Now, in, in my fantasy... Um, uh, the book of Wibbley and Wub. This group that gets in there, I mean, this is like not a real popular concept. Just take over a country by using technology and lying to them in a way they never lied before. I mean, when you get used to lying to a bunch of people and they get you get them to believe it, and you get used to everybody saying, "Okay, you tell us anything you want on TV, we'll believe." <sighs> yeah. Okay. Now, when when does the fun stuff start? You know, oh, the, it is the news. That's the fun stuff. Wow. Oh, is it the entertainment part now? No, we're still in the news. Wow, it sure looks like entertainment. Uh, okay, 
Now, go get your fudgies and go get your snacks and come back. All right. Oh, yes. Now, back to you again. A word from our sponsors. Wait a minute. Shit. We don't have any sponsors. In fact, would you believe in 12, 13, 14 years, tiny Texas houses, am I talking loud enough? Tiny Texas houses, um, salvage Texas, pure salvage living, all those entities put up, oh, geez, hundreds of hours of entertainment, of pictures. Oh, we fed Facebook back when nobody was feeding Facebook anything cool. And YouTube? Oh, man, some of my early YouTubes looked like Keystone Cops. But you know what? I've never made a penny. Not one penny. That monetization thing. That seems to have eluded me. Yeah, we had, not that we didn't have a lot of views. Shoot, when, when Facebook started, they used to do friends of friends. How many people are you touching? If you touch this guy and he's got 30 friends and that guy's got 30 friends, that guy's got 30 friends, how many guys are you touching? I was up to about 7 million, 8 million, and they stopped using those numbers because it started letting you know, hey, wait a minute, your product might be worth some money. Uh, look at all these people. We're looking at what you're doing. You got 79,000 followers. Wow. How can Facebook make money off of you? We'll start charging you for your followers to see you. Wow. What a great idea for them. Oh, and we'll then charge you to boost your following so if you're getting 50,000 people looking at it and you pay us, you'll get 90,000, 100,000, 300,000, whatever we have to promise you to give us some money so we can pretend like we're going to get you more hits. Uh, quite the opposite actually happened back in those days. And so because of my protest, in other words, I ain't paying for nothing. When you promise me something, you don't give it to me. I'm not going to pay you more money. Oh, well, in that case, look at that. Not as many people are getting your posts. Imagine that. How did that happen? Uh, well, let me see. If I was a businessman, and I just plain wanted to rip off John Q. Public, not that anybody would, but in this fantasy world of Wibbley and Wub, which I speak of, because Darby, the main character, well, he looks a lot like me, sounds a lot like me, acts a lot like me, and has this place he lives, this fantasy place he lives called Salvage, Texas. And from that place where he lives, he looks out upon the world as if from inside the TV looking out, which is kind of what he's doing. <laughs> Check it out. Look in here. See me? If you're not using TV, it might be a cell phone. The point is, you're not looking at me. You're looking at an image of me. Except, unlike the president in my story, the one that everybody bid on and, and bought and then put in place behind him is... Ooh, well, there's been a lot of things said about what she might be, but succubus or whatever. Um, I, I, anyway, in the book, um, unfortunately... This old guy, the, this this guy they bid on, um, he's not so good at just talking spontaneously. He has to have a teleprompter and a little thing in his ear, which is kind of funny because sometimes they'll say something like, ah, salute that soldier, and he'll go, salute that soldier, and not figure out that that's, no, that's your instruction, dude. You're walking by soldiers, eh, eh, salute. Um, and by the way, you know why Americans salute like this? Incidentally, do you know why you have palm down instead of, palm up. Now, if you haven't been a soldier or an American at war, that would mean nothing to you. The difference between this and this. Let me tell you something. What makes America great? We salute like this. We grow our hair long if we want to. We grow our beard long if we want to. And do you know why these three things are very important to you? 
Because in that story I'm telling you about with that really bad ending on that chapter, well, that president they bid on, he actually got in the office under all sorts of fakery and all sorts of chicanery, you know, all sorts of misdeeds that were done. And sadly, I'm telling you so sadly, it looks like it worked for the moment. Unless there's a world union of beings that comes together and says, hey, wait a minute, maybe he wasn't the best guy, but you know what? He was a whole lot better than World War III or other things that could come. So in the end of this chapter, there's this kind of <clears throat> resistance to the rubber band being pulled back too far by the wrong people to propel the rest of mankind into oblivion. Imagine that. This is a horrific ending to that chapter. It looks pretty spooky. Luckily, luckily, I got some insight on the future in the book. You see, I've been getting chapters sent back to me from this guy, and he's 90 years old, and he's saying, man, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Here, here's some more chapters. And I mentioned he's 90 years old, but he's also 30 years in the future, so, well, 25 years, what the heck. Um, the chapters are pretty cool, though, because the next one is actually really exciting. And that's why I actually just kind of got to get everybody here, too, because this is really important, this next chapter. But you know what? I always talk too long. Everybody wants to run away. Nobody, you know, the average time on this is about nine minutes people watch. Now, why do I talk for nine for an hour if people only watch for nine minutes? Well, guess what? If you were a censor and you were being paid by the hour and you only had eight hours and you had to watch X amount of people, and guess what? One of those sons of bitches just talk way too much and you had to go through and go, what is he saying actually? And how much of that is real? And how much that's bullshit? And how much of that is anybody else listening to? And is anybody else? Should we just censor the whole thing or should we let everybody think that there's still some freedom of speech out there? Wow. He's just crazy old son of a bitch. Let him go. So every once in a while. Well, that's old people. No, I'm 65, so I'm, I'm old people now. And once in a while, you have moments of lucidity. You just might channel something through that somebody might want to listen to. And if that would be the case, you might actually, through some cryptic sort of main, maybe virus, implant an idea, a seed. As Mikhail Bakhtin would have said in Russia, while in jail or maybe while out, he went to jail actually under the auspices that he was trying to go ahead and possibly support the Russian Orthodox Church in a time when Russia was communist and you didn't support the church. He went to, not prison. No. You crazy. You don't need to go to court to make a crazy person go into a sanitarium. So what's crazy? <laughs> what is crazy? You know what? That's turned into an issue, hasn't it? Who determines who's crazy? Dr. Freud? Oh, goodness, he's gone. That's right. That crack, I'm a cokehead and pedophile that managed to help make all of our psychological universities possible, thanks to the rich, like the Rockefellers and others like that. In the book I'm writing, of course, that's not the real story, right? Whose perception of crazy? That's, you know, some people... Again, guys, I'm writing a book. This is all fantasy. All you guys are reality-oriented. Don't you think that I'm going to be talking about reality here? Because this is a story I'm writing. An old man just putting together using your help. Yeah. Because in many ways, you actually help write the chapters that I'm reading about that are published many years down the road. Yeah. I'm just the guy passing along the information. The head inside of this little box. The digital manifestation, thanks to some really brilliant kids, that made it possible for me to broadcast around the world. That's crazy. That's why it's just a story. Just a fantasy. Here's the good part. The next chapter's beginning. Yeah. And by now, all the sensors dropped off. They're all busy, man. That's on bitch. Is he ever going to go anywhere with this? No, let's go on to somebody else. Let's harass somebody else. Let's troll somebody else. Yeah, I agree. Go for it. Bye. But then on the other hand, 
The rest of us? The ones going to write the next chapter? We're going to share that world union of being, that, that believing, that having the faith that not just one person can make a difference, but the we, W-I-I, this I, you, next to you. Is there another I next to you? Check it out. Now, me, me, uh, me, that's M-I-I, -I, I'm sorry. People get all mixed up by Felicia. Oh, did Felicia leave? I didn't even know she was there. Oh. Anyway, in the story, Darby constantly upsets religious people. It's not because he's talking religion. He's certainly not talking religion. He's talking about how to unify a bunch of people who have different religions. Use a common word, God, to describe an ultimate being or a unity or one. Even the bad guys are made out of the same stuff as the good guys. Their assignment in carnation in life is to be a pain in the ass to us. And our assignment is to be a pain in the ass to them. Because there's really not a middle. There's a dividing line in which you choose. Are you here for good, truth, honor, respect, love? So that more life can flourish in what could be a paradise if we all the eyes work together now me that's me m i i two eyes but it's also the i and the i now the third eye your pineal gland that's the eye that connects to spirit as some believe as in my book Hopefully that drives off Felicia and others that don't want to consider that this is a story like going and watching a TV show or reading a book while you're driving down the road because frankly you don't have to be looking at my face, but guess what? Sometimes this gelatinous shell with a bunch of teeth still stuck in it, wrinkled and furred as it is, Sometimes it tells you a second message hidden behind the words. Why? Because some people think they can see. Hmm. They can see what I'm saying by just hearing the words. Yeah, reality is what life has given to you and what you can do with it. It was made by you. How do you achieve it without regret? That's Todd Anderson. And I agree. I had a lot of regrets. When I found out and figured out eventually, it took me 60 years. Perspicuity, the acuity of your perception. If I'm such a great spirit, and we're all such great spirits, and we live outside of this realm of physicality, guess what? When we're sitting down planning about coming in here and having this cool game, this little holographic life that we're getting to have together, well, guess what? When you get that little gelatinous shell and you develop it out and you grow your body and everything and you picked your parents and you picked everything out ahead of time so you got the right genes and you got the right challenges and you got the right traumas, believe it or not, so that you could adapt. Adapt? Yeah. You see, in that first seven years, you develop neural pathways. And if for any reason in the world, you only have one set of things to study, a very simple, simple, simple life, then you develop a very simple, simple set of pathways. Let's just say on the other side of it, you have a very traumatic life and you're constantly going through challenges and you're constantly seeing the ugliness of it. You're seeing the beauty of it, the possibilities of it, which means good and bad. Guess what? I spent my life studying all the people that were successful, all the people who were powerful, all the people that were motivators. I took courses. I studied religions. I mean, I went all out. Literature. You know what the common denominator again? Yeah, it's really crazy. Most of the greatest people I've seen who did it from zero to a hundred miles an hour by themselves. Who came out of poverty, out of the slums, out of families where six out of the seven kids went into drugs, prison, or died before they reached their prime of 49, 50 years old. That's what I think is prime. 
What is it that separates us? Because I've been told plenty of times I'm different. I love being different. But what separates us? Out? Tom Robbins. The Beatles. Oh, there's a long list. Trauma. Hard childhoods. Mothers that were drug addicts. Fathers that were alcoholics. Broken families. Yeah. You'd think you'd be, oh my God, they had everything. That's how come they turned out so great. Uh-uh. Yeah. <clears throat> I know for a lot of people, it seems like the um, the rich all showing off their riches and found happiness and bliss and everything they ever dreamt of as they drink, take drugs, antidepressants, have to go to doctors, take lots of pharma. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My father left his entire estate, 300K to a bartender. You know, his bartender is probably his best friend next to his his life. Which it's so sad. I grew up in families and a family of alcoholics. Um as a child I didn't understand it. Later I came to understand it. My sympathy side, when you understand the trauma and you understand you bought for it. Bought into this beforehand. Now, why? I bought into it. Yeah, because guess what? When you get older, if you manage to overcome the challenges and you don't get angry, which I was angry for a long time, and you don't kill yourself, and many of my friends did, unfortunately. And I tried. I was a miserable failure at killing myself. Thank you. I'm so glad I couldn't hang myself. Got a nice rope burn when I was 15 years old. 15, 16, hard, hard years. Yeah. You know, stamp collection. I'd get rid of that now while there's still people collecting stamps, for example. Get rid of all that, by the way, as some people would say. Um, inheritance. Inheritance is something you receive from somebody else that's full of all sorts of energy from their focusing all their energy on it. Now, for some people, that can be quite the curse. Lots of shit can go with that. Why? You don't know what they did to get that. You don't know what they sacrificed to get some of that treasure you're hauling in there and just reaping. And, and guess what? If you don't pass it on, give it away, steward it to the proper people so that it does some good, oh, then you inherit all the tacky shit that came with it. Oh, there's no tacky stuff with it. Who did they work for? Oh, they worked for... You know, we don't want to talk about that. Why? Well, because they killed people. They were soldier. Uh, or why? Because they killed people because they did um, all sorts of possibilities. Mine gold, which contaminated a bunch of land and water. They killed people. Or maybe they did uh, made weapons and made a bunch of money designing weapons. Oh, yeah. There's lots of things you can say if you look at it right. It's not necessarily a good thing. Salvage, by the way. Salvage makes more millionaires than any other industry in America. You salvage all the treasures that are left by your ancestors, by your relatives from the past. They'll be given to you for free. Treasure before your eyes, at your fingertips, for human energy. What will you do with these opportunities? Now that the eyes are opened and there is a need... How do I plant these seeds? Indeed. Most of you, a nursery rhyme will go a long ways. Why? It helps us remember things. Jingles. Oh, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. Gosh, I must have been 10 years old when that came out. Now, why did I bring that up? 
We are influenced by the programming in our first seven years more than anything else in our entire lifetime. That first seven years determines how we intake information, how we process it, how we store it. And if we only have to do it in one environment, what we get treated like if we succeed according to that person's determination or fail and are rewarded thus based on what they want us to do. So... With that in mind, if I want you to help people all the time, I'll reward you if you help people, great. Except what we find out is kids want to help everybody. And they'll help you, help you, help you until you start rewarding them. And the more you reward them and thank them, the less they'll help you. Does that sound familiar? I had over a thousand employees during my time. And it wasn't that I ever had more than 20 at a time. Which means I went through a lot of employees. And I'd get them out of prison where they'd been kept on antidepressants to keep them happy. They let them out. They don't give me more antidepressants. 30 days later, they're not happy. As one guy put it, he said, don't let me have any knives anymore. I said, why? He said, every time I get a knife in my hand, I start thinking about cutting off somebody's head. Pfft, okay, that's a pretty good reason. And the guy's living in a little a trailer I had out in the back of the building. He'd gotten out of prison he was about 300 pounds and under five foot eight. And I told him when he first came, I said, man, I, I don't know what I can have you do here. You're so heavy. If you lose weight and stuff, try in the back, live in the back, and I'll try to give you a chance. He had tattoos on him, and, you know, he's a, a Desert Storm vet. And I have a soft spot for vets, mind you. I'm a vet. My dad was a vet. I had a lot of friends who were vets. They're all dead. Hmm. So... I'm always wanting to help somebody out. Now, some people say that good people don't do bad things. Sometimes good people do what appear like bad things to bad people. Unfortunately, this man went to prison because while he was in Desert Storm, a cousin of his raped his little sister. So when he got back and found out, he cut him 49 times and nearly cut his neck off in the process of killing him with a knife. I paid attention when he said, don't put a knife in my hand. Hi, Anna. Sorry he came in at such a gross point. Um, it is sad. And the man spent my number of years. He ended up moving away, luckily. I didn't have to send him away. He voluntarily left. He wasn't happy here because I expected him to do things he hadn't done. And therefore, um, he screwed him up to show me how much he didn't want to do him. So when the radiator cowling went through the radiator and cost me $1,200 because he didn't want to bolt it on there because he wanted to show me he wasn't really going to do the job I asked him to do and successfully proved it, I was eager for him to leave. But not so eager to make him too mad in the process. Because I've had... People try to pull guns on me and pull claw hammers on me to hit me inside the head and all sorts of that. Employees that got pissed off because I said, for example, hey, if you're not going to show up for two days, why don't you at least call in and let me know? Because I got a schedule. Got to keep it. So he pulled the claw hammer out and came at me saying, what the hell? You think you get to control my life? Whoops. Yeah. On my job. You need to call me. Oh. 14 guys looking at you. You can't back down. You have to stand in and wait for him to swing that hammer. Stand up on that porch looking down at you. Stand on the concrete below. And figure out where you're going to throw him when you grab that hand. No fear. You got to know that in life. How do you learn that? You learn that by picking the life early and going through the trauma. So when the time comes, you don't stress out, freak out, panic, and freeze. You plan what you're about to do. Grab his arm, grab his crotch, flip him over backwards. He's going to land on that piece of floor you got laid out behind you for another house. End of story. He didn't swing. He did get fired. That was one of six brothers that I had hired and over the years fired. And one, the one I liked the most... Once he threatened me with a two-by-four when I fired him. <laughs> Once he threatened me with a hammer. And the last time his dad stepped in the middle because he came at me on the front porch. 
And lucky his 70-year-old dad stepped in the middle. Some people got angry all over him and can't get over it. You can't give them enough chances. So again, what's this about? The next chapter is how we're going to write it. When we go ahead and throw that nasty past out, we throw out the lies, we throw out the illusions, we throw out the um, perception problem, truth. Or do we take lies because somebody's going to pay us and make our life easy, give us a check. If you'll just go ahead and swallow this bait and wait, I'll jerk your jolly ass out of the water and eat you, little fish. Sad. In that book that I'm writing, the next chapter, after they bid on a president and win and they go ahead and do all this stuff to go ahead and take over control of an entire country without ever firing a bullet, they use fear and they put the masks on. Now, the three things I said earlier that were really important. One of them was this fuzz on my face, for example. Oh, yeah. And this, this hair, you see me sport every once in a while. No dye. All natural. Did you know in the old days that when a conqueror came in and took over your country? Now, for Sweden, you'll understand this. Over Europe, you guys all understand this. I mean, if you left any men alive because you wanted the women, you needed to impregnate and create a new nation with your your heritage. You can't go back and attack your grandpa who's over there that attacked you and took over everything. But the males they did keep for, for slaves, why, they shaved their heads and they shaved their faces. That's how you spot the slaves. If you're a man with no hair, you do not dare Try to grow it. You're a slave. Easy to spot. Like a mask. It takes away your power. Now, if you're a woman with a beautiful smile um, and beautiful teeth and beautiful eyes and beautiful nose and, and you know what? You might be a distraction to somebody else. And in a world where they just come and kill you so they can take your distraction away from you, you want to cover that up. But also, if other guys can see her, and she has the ability then to use all that smile and be tender and loving looking, why she just might find the guys to come take out that son of a gun that's beating her up and taking advantage of her because she's all like this all the time and got nothing, got no land, got no rights, can't drive a car, and can't talk. What does a mask do? Well, it takes away your power. Now, why did I bring that up, guys? See this? That's why. If I put a mask on right now and I don't like wearing masks, let's just suppose I had a mask and I actually don't even have a mask right here handy. But if I had a mask, now tell me something. Do I sound better? Do I look better? Could you tell me, am I smiling? Am I happy? Am I sad? No, you can't tell. And I can't hold on any longer. I'm getting already oxygen starved. I like oxygen. What little I can still extract out of the air with all the other crap that's being put into it, thanks to the chemtrails, you know, not. In this book I'm writing now, don't you know nobody getting on my butt about not being into the real world and talking about crazy shit? Because guess what? It's, it's a fairy tale fantasy book I'm talking about here. Don't be bugging me, Mr. Troll, Mrs. Troll, who doesn't have anything to do but take care of a dog or a horse or a, a parrot or themselves. I mean, I have some trolls out there that got more pictures of themselves than I do. And I'm what's considered to be somewhat of a celebrity in the sense that I'm paid to have this image show up in front of you and looking like whatever I want it to look like for the day. So you'll know it's not the same image that was there yesterday. <laughs> Guess what? As one of the people put it yesterday, time is linear, by the way. When you wake up in the morning, 
guess what? You really don't know what day it is until you get up and you look around and you make sure, A, you're out of the dream. If you're a lucid dreamer, you might even have to check once in a while. And then, guess what? Some people, they're not actually waking up. They're just going from being in a sleep state to um, being in cognitive dissonance. That means they go through the day and they're not paying attention to what's really happening. They got all these distractions and they're going to be going out doing their swim gig, their whatever gig, bowling and sports. And by the day is done, they're going to be going to sleep and never even understand, communicate with another human being about the important things in life. And important is just the thing that's just such a hard word to define in this day and age. But to me right now with all this going on, Hmm. This is what makes the next chapter so special, guys. I don't want to be a slave. I like having my hair. I don't want to have to wear a mask. I like showing. I'm not a slave. I have the right to go without a mask. Now, you don't want to get near me. Stay socially distanced. Stay 10 feet away. I'll work with you. In fact, look at this. I can go around the world. And you know what? I can still spread a virus if I'm lucky. <laughs> if I'm lucky. Now, this is what I mean. What is a virus? This is a definition that's been very difficult to nail down. A computer virus. <clears throat> oh, my God. No. COVID virus. Oh, my God. Um, a virus that carries cancer-killing material and delivers it to a cancer cell. A virus then kills the cancer cell. Is that a good virus or is that a bad virus? Well, that's a good virus. It certainly is. We actually used a virus like that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, to help save President Carter in his 80s from a brain cancer. Revolutionary new development in brain cancer. But, oh, by the way, uh, you common folk, you can't get that. Oh, me, I'm common folk too, but... I'm not real wrong. I'm I'm an I'm an illusion. I'm an image. I'm just on your screen. So, you know, like Max Headroom. Do you really know when I made this? Would you know if I ship this back in time to you when you receive it in the morning? If it's time stamped, made yesterday. You see, you go, oh, I see. He grew a little bit of a beard yesterday. Um, what made it yesterday versus today? Oh, look, he changed shirts. Oh, look, the sun is coming up behind him in the forest instead of being hidden. Must be a different day. Must be a time change. Really? So if tomorrow when I come over here and I look like I got all young looking sideburns, and I look like a young guy and I got my shave and... You go, oh, look at that. It must be when uh, that was back when. No, that's Brad. Oh, it looks almost like him. No, that's Brad. Where's he at? He didn't get on screen. No. Uh -uh. Not that boy. He's a businessman. Shit. He can get in trouble. Get canceled. What's he making? Oh, he, no, he's out of business, but. He just got all hooked up in that when he was doing it. All his people threatening him all the time and saying, I wouldn't buy from you if you're going to talk that way. And so he just said, bullshit, and left. He didn't need to build anything for anybody, that is, or buy anything or sell anything. He just did it because he wanted to do it for good reason. So, if you don't move... Whether it's your body, your being. Sometimes you get knocked over and you figure out, what the heck happened to me? You're being inspired to move. That's why the next chapter is so exciting. I want to end this on a good note. So part of it is, if you don't move, your atrophy is going to cause you great stress. It's going to cause your body to go downhill. You're going to, body parts, your heart won't work because it's not a Gregorian knot. It goes like this and it doesn't pump as well. I should say stop the flow of blood through your system if you're built right and you're walking and everything. It's actually a, a regulator more than a pump. But if you don't take care of yourself, your vessel, you're going to end up in hell while you're living on earth. 
Now, you got the ability to go ahead and make that heaven on earth. I mean, I know crippled people. I've seen people going through suffering, all sorts of physical pain, and still finding this heaven on earth. It's the perspective. It's the attitude. It's how you deal with the synchronicity when it arrives. When somebody says, hey, you, help. And you go, I ain't helping you, I'm busy. It might be that when you gave them that help, the gift back to you, the reward was beyond your imagination. So you didn't imagine any reason to help them, which means you had the wrong motives to start with. But had you gone over and helped, hmm, well, that old man might have given you everything you needed to go ahead and build your house. Your windows, your doors, your floors, your roofing. But then what would you do with it? That becomes a question. So the chapter about opportunity, which is what comes next. Do you realize how many opportunities are opening up as we speak, as I speak, because it's only me? It is unbelievable because suddenly you are going to pay attention to things you never, ever paid attention to before. Why? Because necessity is the mother of invention. And I assure you without any reservation, you can check back with me in a year. You can check back with me in two years. You got so much adversity ahead in this country. You can't begin to imagine it. Just this winter alone. We ain't even got all of our snow. You, I mean you, excuse me. I, I don't always include me in that sense of I don't want to be part of everything you guys get to experience out there in your world. Down here, we're expecting some cold, but not snow. Please, 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 please. Thank you. Uh, a little teeny bit, maybe. But the point is this. It's not just the snow. It's that we won't have food. We're going to have floods. We're going to have more problems with the system. And when you got... Uh, the wrong motivations driving the people in charge makes for a bad chapter. So, what makes this next chapter so incredibly important is that once you motivate somebody, once you inspire them, fire them up, Give them passion in the belly, whether it be for truth, honor, family, love, country, freedom, to think, to believe, to perceive me, two eyes looking at you, the other eye that forms the we, W. I, I, that join together to create a world union of beings. I've already enrolled Rocky, my dog, and baby doll, my dog, and my cat, Tang, and my cat, little sister, and I got a lot of other enrollees. These are beings, sentient beings that all deserve proper treatment. I can speak English. I'm entering them in. I've got their application and they've already been accepted into the Intercosmic Web Society as beings deserving of fair treatment. Now, I want to add a whole bunch of more beings to that list. If you don't mind, I'd like <clears throat> maybe a whole bunch more Wubbers. Wubbers are people who believe in Wub, energy of soul, communication, mind to mind, to my dog, to my cat. Telepathy. They know when I'm hurting. They know when I'm feeling bad. They can sense that. They'll come there. They'll, they'll soothe me. They love me unconditionally. I love them unconditionally. You know how hard that is? Uh, look in the mirror. Tell yourself, I love you. Don't blink. Don't look away. Ten times. I love you. Don't qualify. Beat yourself up. Except you're fat. Except you're ugly. Except you're mean. Except you're a bastard. Except you're a lousy father. All those things that you can say to yourself when you're looking. Don't. Don't. Stop. Just look. 
love yourself in the sense that I love you. If you can't love that child you're looking at in the mirror, you can't get to this next chapter I'm writing about. You can't be part of that chapter. And I want you all to be part of this book so bad. Because if we all work together, you know what? If we communicate and don't get censored. So this is fantasy, guys. Remember, this is all fantasy. This is a book he's writing. Darby, that character. Yeah, look him up. You'll find him. He's on the internet. He must be real. Hmm. It's a story. And when you get done looking in that mirror, if you can say that ten times in a row, I love you, and don't blame. And mean it. This is hard. This took me 30 days. Every day trying and not making it. And giving up. Because I didn't love me. No. It was after my son passed. And I was rebuilding. Salvaging that past that I had. Salvaging me. Out of the anger. Mm. Out of the pain. You can salvage a new life. And that's what this is about today. The I love you part of it all. I created Wibblery and Wub as a story. A long time ago. Because we just ruined the word love. I love my dog. I love my cat. I love cinnamon. I love honey. I love a lot of things. Now define love. Something you can eat? No. It's a person? No. Car. I love cars. Oh my God. I just love a 55 Chevy. Oh, again, love. Now, Wub, W-U-B. Energy of soul. Manifested as a being. Wub in body. Wib. Capital letters. I'm a wib. Why? I live by the meaning of Wub. I communicate. I wibbleize. That's what this is. This is my wib. It's a little wibbleization. W-I-B, lowercase. And it's a wibbleization that I made on video so you would be able to hear and understand. I love you. And I can say that. Why? Because you are me. When I look inside of this mirror, how to reach that point? I married the masculine and feminine sides of myself once long. While I was looking in that mirror, I found that I could make peace. These two eyes, the magnetic on one side, the electric on the other side, the interaction of the two, the masculine and the feminine, the scalar waves of each of the chakras. Use the words you want. If you don't love yourself, unconditionally and allow that light from within to glow with unconditional power the power of one my coffee's running out if you can do that and look in the mirror for me for you, for us. Now, for some people, us means U.S. of A. When you see capital letters. But us is actually the we. W-I-I. That's the unity part of a community. We're communicating. Communing together. For unity. And this is a global community. I may never see your face, but trust me, I love you. One of the hardest things in life, my greatest love story, my fantasy that I always dreamt I'd have one day, turned out to be a fantasy. She was a sociopathic liar, even fake cancer and her godchildren in their teens being real children, real boys. They were her sons, but I didn't know. Later on, after my son had passed, after she had gone on and committed suicide later on, and left those boys and the man she left with alone, 
I came to understand. Her role was to do that. If she hadn't been the liar, I wouldn't have admired the father that didn't exist, that did Qigong every day, every morning. Six foot four, that image of this man in Scotland. And I wanted to be like him because he could raise a daughter that incredible. So I ended up getting into Qigong. I never even heard of it before. Yoga. I was so out of balance. I couldn't even do a pose without rolling over or falling down. Now, while she turned out to be a liar and had all sorts of bad intentions and in the end a succubus, that was her role. I love her for that. She left with tens of thousands of dollars of my stuff, my blessings. I continued to send money and kept her phone and the phone for her godsons going for another year. Paying back karma from another lifetime. That's what we do, guys. We pay forward. We pay backwards. It's not just one round. Jesus never said this is one game, one show. No, not at all. Now, there's about to be this big old thing about religion, who's right, who's wrong. Truth. Honor. Respect. No exclusivity. We don't kill each other off until one team wins, and that's the right team because God must have blessed them because they win. We just do it where we all win. We don't have war. We find peace as it once was during a Tartarian age that's been nearly erased. Let's bring back the tribes of Tartaria. Let's bring back the honor. Let's bring back the truth. Let's bring back that concept of a a Christ-like figure, a Jesus, a Buddha, a Muhammad, simply an entity that we can believe could unite us all. And it's not a religion. It's simply we all agree with this world union of beings. And there's an embassy we go to. And we all meet with the other beings of the universe instead of our leaders who have less than righteous motivations meeting with those other beings. And then we consider all the whales and the other beings that are sentient that have a right to not be just trashed. If in this book of fantasy we could do that, and we have the technology now, if we didn't kill off 11 million babies with abortion, we'd also have probably some genius kids. Because you pick up the seven generations of knowledge before you through your genes. And if you come in and you're taught properly, you can now then grow another human being that is the best supercomputer on the planet. And that's what everybody's afraid of. If my genes with my experience at this age, with all that recorded onto them, was to be born into a child, with good genes. A spirit coming on the planet looking for the gene pool and the knowledge and everything they needed to go out there and change the future, which is not written in stone. It's written in ice. What's the difference? Ice is water in seven different states. Ice becomes water, becomes steam, becomes BZ water. Well, ice in the right environment is fuel. When you break apart hydrogen and oxygen, you create amazing amounts of energy. In water, you can write history in a drop. There's that much memory capacity in a drop of water. When you drop it into the lake, the whole lake gets the knowledge. I am almost all water and clay in a beautiful microbial community of bacteria and viruses and parasites. And we, W-I-I, form me. And through that, all of us are connected. 
Because this is the same energy source. It's how you use it. Now, I've been on way too long. And most people lasted nine minutes. Guess what? The best part might have been somewhere else. Not in the first nine minutes. How will they ever know? They won't. This isn't meant for everybody. Hmm. It's just meant for a few. That's all that are going to make it. But to those leaders, the other lights out there, those shining lights, that legion of light, get ready. The next chapter, well, you might say it took this trigger, this event, or I should say, non-event, to inspire, to motivate, to ignite the passion, the hope, the desire to do something. A warrior. What is a warrior? Not somebody that goes out and kills on command. That's a soldier. My dad was a soldier. They said, drop napalm on that village. Me, I said, but, but there's people there still. And he said, yeah, but we dropped flyers over that village two weeks ago. Told them to get out of there. They didn't get out of there. It's their fault they're dying, running out of there, burning alive. More as hell. Vietnam's a long time ago. My dad, my friends saw ugly, ugly things. Since then, we've had other wars, but not a draft. Poor people. Hired to go off and kill people, come home, commit suicide. No problem. I know that's a nasty way to say it, but 22 kids a day still killing themselves. Six out of ten women on the street are veterans. Living on the street can't make a housework anymore. Please. Let's write a better chapter. Understand. If you can't, hard as it is. This was to get you ready. If you do take what was given to you in a positive way, see it in a positive way, go back and understand, thank you. If you hadn't knocked me off my horse, I'd still be riding down the wrong path. Now, let me get up and do something. Let me make a difference. Let me live, not talk. Words will not solve this. Because I trust you have learned the words. The words of these politicians. The words of these generals who do not back up freedom for sake of profit and power. If you had a bunch of weapons and you were told, put them in a toy box. You can't play with your toys no more. You got no more power. In fact, you may not have a job because we're going to peace, global peace. Oh, can I hold my breath long enough for this to go over that how am I going to survive if I can't have a war how am I going to use all my weapons up oh my god how am I going to get my contracts how am I going to make my commissions on all those weapons I got to buy because I just used up all these other ones oh my god how am I... you're going to ruin it all JFK tried to ruin it all JFK one of my heroes from when I was a kid tried to stop it all. Executive order number 57, which I dare say Biden is reversed by now, to dismantle the CIA and the FBI, who now have got their leaders back, the ones that were persecuting everybody before. I had hope again and decided to vote. Now I'm just going to go write a book, a fantasy, about what might happen if you and I became we W-I-I. -I. And it wasn't just me who came here. 
preparing to make this right the day this dreadful, dreadful dream were to come true. I'm ready. How about you? Have a great day, guys. The next chapter, if you help, literally all of you who might see this if it wasn't getting banned, Shadow Man, if it might get shared, and I'm going to try what I can, but I guarantee you for 10 years, I've been running up against the wall. So Darby's coming out now. Why? Darby's been inspired. It didn't turn out like I thought it would. I believed. Cheaters never win. I believe every chapter comes to an end. And a new one gets written. Or so we pretend. Please. Everybody around the world. If America goes down, we all go down. I was born in Germany, lived in South America, traveled. I came to this planet to live, not to be owned by one country, sold to the highest bidder as a soldier as I was. Luckily, living through it, I don't want to see more war. So, I'm going to do what I can. Please help, share. We, WII, can make a difference. A world union of beings that actually forms around all those in the middle. Have the ability to change the shape. Manipulate Wall Street into understanding the power of we as a union financially not to mention all the secrets. Yeah. Everybody's got secrets. And in this day and age a whistleblower hmm Wow.